In one of my previous videos on an HP 7044 XY plotter, I created the Lorentz attractor programmatically with the help of an Arduino. And based on viewers feedback, I thought it would be really cool if I could do the same thing with a pure analog circuit. So I searched the internet and found the Glenn Clenchmas design and wanted to give it a try. So this circuit uses two analog devices, AD633 analog multiplier ICs. And these ICs are quite expensive. They run about uh, $10 each on DigiKey. And even in quantities of 1000 they cost more than $6 each. And for less than $10, you could uh, get five of these on eBay. I had always been puzzled at how some sellers could sell chips at such low prices. And most explanations I had been given was that uh, perhaps those chips were used and pulled from some test gear or they were out of spec rejects from manufacturers. But either way, I guess I have been very lucky with my eBay purchases before and had not run into any noticeable problems. Well, that is until now. So I bought five of these 8633s and uh, built gland circuits right here. I did simplify the design a little bit and remove some of the configuration switches, so it's basically based on a fixed frequency now. And of course, you have guessed by now, it uh, did not work. And my attention immediately turned to these 8633s. So are these 8633s fake? Well, the only way to find out is uh, to put them in the circuit and give it a thorough test. And here we have the schematics from 8633's datasheet. And as you can see here, the test to test this out is very simple. We can put it into a circuit like this. And if we tie uh, the uh, pin 2 and pin 4 to the ground, then the output from the pin 7 is basically the product of x and y over 10 and plus z. And if we tie z to the ground, so this uh, summing input to the ground, then what happened is uh, the output should be the product of uh, x and y over 10. So here is a circuit that I came up with and um, basically it's on a breadboard. And as you can see here, we have uh, the pin 1 is uh, the input from the central, uh, center tap of this potentiometer and pin 3 is the input from the center tap of this uh, potentiometer and pin 2 and pin 4 are both tied to the ground. So, and of course uh, pin 6 is also tied to the ground. So the output should just be, uh, pin 7 should just be the product of uh, x and y over 10. So now let's, uh, I powered it up and we can see so let's take a look at uh, the measurement here. And for the uh, X, so here is the ground I'm going to put uh, one of the input here. And for pin 1, we have roughly 1 volt. Okay, so for pin 3, we also have roughly 1 volt. So we're expecting that uh, the pin 7, because it's a uh, the product of the two and over 10. So I would expect it's somewhere close to 0.1 volt. So let's see if that's the case. And as you can see, the, uh, the measured voltage is 0.8. So that's clearly not 0.1. Um, so this tells me that this chip, at least for whatever it's doing, it's not doing the business of uh, uh, producing the analog products of those two inputs. And further, let's take a look at uh, the specification for standby current. So for standby, and if we are using plus minus 15 volts, the nominal current should be around 4 milliamps, the quiescent current. And uh, so let's take a look at what we have right now. So right now, as you can see, if I just uh, put it to the uh, power supply screen, and we're drawing about 25 milliamps on the negative rail, and uh, not sure what is going on with the positive rail, but uh, why it's not drawing anything. Um, but clearly that uh, 
25 milliamps is way out of the spec. So just to test out whether or not this is uh, just the uh, problem of this uh, single 8633s, I'm going to plug in another one. So let me turn up the uh, power supply here. And I'm just going to turn the output off. And now I'm going to replace this one with a, uh, with a different one from the same batch. So this one is a different one. I'm just going to make sure that uh, it's put into, oh, listen, that's a wrong, wrong one. Here we go. So pin one, pin four ground. Yep. So let's, uh, now um, we can power it back on again and see what we got. So this time actually, uh, immediately off the bat, it's uh, the current draw is slightly different, so as you can see here, I'm going to zoom it out again. It's uh, drawing about 35 milliamps, so it's even higher than before. And uh, so let's see what do we get for the measurement here. So pin 1, and uh, let's see what's the input here. Um, so it's changed a little bit because of, uh, that's probably to be expected if we have this potentiometers here and uh, depends on the impedance of these pins, the voltage differs slightly. So pin 1 right now is 1.157, pin 3 is 1.2. So I would expect that somewhere to be, you know, point, uh, the output to be 0.1516 uh, or something like that. So let's take a look here. Wow, so now we get a 2.5 volts output. So clearly that is uh, not um, x times y minus uh, divided by 10. So I think, and also if you feel the, uh, the chip, they run a little bit warm, and uh, which it shouldn't be because uh, the quiescent current should be just around six milliamps. So now we're measuring about 35 milliamps. So the only conclusion I can draw is that these chips are fake. They're not just uh, under spec uh, parts that are binned for uh, not suitable for production, but uh, these are genuinely fake. And uh, I don't know what the circuit inside is, but they clearly do not do analog multiplication. So, which is quite disappointing because uh, I wanted, really wanted to build this uh, analog uh, Lawrence uh, curve generator and uh, I just didn't want to spend uh, a lot of money on these uh, 8633s. But uh, I guess um, that's certainly something to be watched out for and uh, if uh, you have any experience with the uh, 8633s or uh, any other chips uh, bought on eBay that are fake and uh, please let me know. And thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, do remember to subscribe, share, and uh, I will catch up with you next time.